I'm excited to be welcome on one of the top players in the country. And of course, the first member of Maryland 2021 recruiting class in Julian Reese. What's going on there, my guy? Yeah. I'm sure, man. Well, you've now been committed for a couple of months. Someone else has already joined you now in Ike. We'll talk about that in a second, man. But as time continues to go on, how does it feel to be committed? It's feels pretty good. Like, the recruiting process is finally over. It just feels good of a fresh and relief. I finally know where I'm going to spend my life. It's been my years in college. And you now got in about another year to get to campus. What do you plan to kind of work on until you get out there? I plan on working on my, like, on my strength so I can get bigger and speed so I can catch up with the college guys and the college pace of basketball because they going back to high school. Absolutely. So let's talk about this commitment, man. I mean, you're going to Maryland, as I said. Who are some other schools that are kind of in the mix for you? Um, if I didn't go to Maryland, I probably would have either Virginia Tech or I am. What's it out? What's it out to you about those programs? Um, just like, like the same as Maryland, basically the family, like plan where, like, I, I would like plan for Miami and Virginia Tech because, like, the coaching staff is real. Like, they did a really good job recruiting. They like they put a really good show on. They showed me a lot. Just like uh, made me feel like I was really a part of the family. That's big time. So, what would you say was like the biggest thing that separated Maryland from those other schools? Because Maryland was pretty much here before, like, all the other schools, really. They were, they stayed loyal to me, my family, before, like, way before they even offered my sister. Like, they just, like, they just stayed down from believing in me right now. Another big thing is that you will be the hometown kid. What's it going to feel like to kind of be able to be embraced by the city and kind of be the hometown hero? That would be, that, that's a big thing for me, too. I get to play in front of my family, my friends. Like, just put on a choke and I'm, like, that would be different from me going to, like, to Miami or Virginia. So, like, they wouldn't have to travel to see me play. They just get to see me more. That would be a big thing, too. We have to talk about your commitment, man. I mean, obviously, you did it on Mother's Day. You had a nice post about that. Which, take us through that whole day and how you kind of set it up to kind of surprise your mom that you're going to go to Maryland. Well, I first, like, Mother's Day was on Sunday, right? Mm hmm So my uh, sister on. Thursday before that, and that's when I told her that she first didn't believe me. She was really excited about that. And then on the Saturday, the day before, I told her all the other coaches like they were texting me like they had said UCF, Miami, uh, Marquette, Lewis. I told them the top schools that I just didn't, wasn't interested in the program. Mm -hmm. And one of them, Virginia Tech, actually told my mother that I wasn't interested. Like they, like she, she was mad. Like, why would you, why would you do that without? Yeah, like why would you do that without talking? Blah blah blah. blah. And that's when I called my 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 head coach for basketball at my school. And I told him like to tell the coach not to say nothing because it's like a surprise. And that's when the next day we just did it, and she's just was, like really excited and asking a lot of questions about it. Like she was like, shocked. I believe it was something where you obviously had the shirt on, you had the committed on the back. How did you kind of set it up where you were able to kind of surprise her at that moment? Well, my, my, it was basically my sister setting all that up. She got her, her coach from her school to make the shirts. I don't know, I think I got a shirt. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, she got these made so that she can, like, I don't know, it's just re spark. It's just a, like the upgrade for the surprise. Like, you know, it was a lot of surprises that day because we, we bought a lot of stuff from other so your mom had no idea about it then? No, she didn't know until that day. Did she was she shocked at first then? When she kinda like when it kinda set in for that she realized actually you were gonna be going to Maryland? Um, she like we did when we did it like we had a bag. At first, like it was this coffee maker she wanted, flowers, food, and at the bottom it was like a little slip that like it was like a it was a slip. And she had to open it and it said, I'm going to Maryland. <laughs> No, no, it was this shirt. Actually, no, no, this shirt was slip on top of it. I said, I'm going to Maryland. She looked at it and like, she was confused. She didn't know what it was. I said, committed. She's like, oh, and she was like, she was just really, she was shocked. That's so, awesome. Yeah, it was, it was a good experience. That's awesome. And obviously, your sister as well, five star number two overall ranked player in 2020, also is going to Maryland. She'll be able to go together now and attend culture possibly three years together. What will that be like? That would be pretty cool too, like just have a sister there with me, like to push me through everything. Like especially a big sister, like 
inspired me to do more and just be a person I want, like the best player I could be and the best like person I could be. And just keep me focused. Just like another mother there. Really. Mm -hmm. At what point would you say it clicked that you know Maryland was the school you wanted to attend? Um, probably like over quarantine, they showed like really, like they just, like Bino, you know, Coach Bino, he did a really good job of like proving to me like why that school would be worthy of like, like me going there and why, why that'd be a good fit for me. They just gave me a lot of good examples, like good players like Alex Lynn, Sticks, like all them type players, like that played like, play like me. Yeah, they just said I'll, I'll be the next one for them. You obviously mentioned Sticks. He's a guy that runs like your similar position as well. Another guy from the Maryland area to kind of start this pipeline, if you want to call it. Where a lot of guys from your area are obviously going to stay home, go to Maryland. What's it like continuing that? It's it's pretty big. It's a, like a lot of shoes to fill because most of the people from Maryland, Baltimore, they like they played a big role, played pretty good at Maryland. So like that's that's a lot of pressure for me. But I, I feel like I can fill in those footsteps pretty good. Absolutely. And you obviously talk about Angel. You guys growing up, how does one-on-one -on -one games go? How often do you guys play each other? We played each other a lot back then. But, I don't, like, a lot of the games really didn't finish because we used to argue a lot, like, just fight throughout the whole game. My mother had to come outside. just and it, like, We used to have a hoop outside. My mama would took it down because, like, we just like to argue a lot. We were really competitive. We still are. But, like, she really can't beat me now because I'm just, like, stronger. Like, mm. So I would have to shoot all the jump shots I play now. So you don't really want to play me no more. <laughs> Do you guys ever play with each other, like two on two, with you guys on the same team? Um, yeah, sometimes at workout we're on the same team. Sometimes, because like at workouts we still be like arguing, like because we be going so ahead. Like, and our trainer had to stop it, like put us on the same team or something. Then growing up, was she the first one to start playing basketball, or did you guys kind of play at the same time? Who was kind of the first one to start playing? Um. I think I was the first one. Yeah, I, I was the first one. And then it was like a little wreck with me. And my sister was like, she wanted to play. And my mother was like, at first, my mother asked if it was okay. And I said, sure. And she just started killing. Like, she just started killing the league with me and her on the same team. And they didn't like it. And then she got the MVP. I got some other stuff. I forgot what I got. My mother re probably rebounded. Mm -hmm. Something like that. But yeah, she just started killing me. That's when I started noticing like how good she could be because she's so like tall for food. And so to see your be able to go through her recruiting process, how much kind of that impact your recruitment and what was it kind of like what kind of tips did she kind of give you as you were going through your process? She didn't really give me no tips. She just like like told me that like the only thing tips she really gave me was everybody that doesn't have your best interest. Some coaches cool. just like wanna win. Not all programs wanna make the person or player better, a better player. Or like, she, that's, how, that's how she told me, really. But I learned, but I learned through our process that she should, you should, like, pick why because, like, it should, you shouldn't really value a whole bunch of schools because at the end of the day, you're going to pick one. Mm -hmm. So you got to, like, choose very wisely, especially with all the offers. So how much of an impact would you say she had on your commitment to Maryland? Um, she wasn't really pressuring me to go to Maryland. Mm -hmm. She just like we would just she was just like joke like we should come to Maryland like just stuff like that. She wasn't really pressuring me. She knew I would like choose my decision out for me. But she just she just thought it would be fun if I came there or that would be a plus if I came there. Gotcha. And growing up, I never like asking this question. Tell you guys obviously commit, but growing up was Maryland your favorite team or who was kind of your dream school, your favorite team growing up? Um. When I was younger, I thought you only could go to the league if you want like a big blue school, like like a blue blood school. Mm -hmm. I guess, but now as like the basketball is evol like like evolution, like I think like any school you can go to the league, like you can go to cop and go to the G League, and then go up to the league, play overseas. Like it's just like it's so much easier to get to the league for guys. And, like I like I like that about basketball. I not agree more. And as I mentioned earlier, you also have another guy that came in a couple months after you and Ike. How has your guys' bond continued to grow now over the past couple months? 
Um, man, I we we were cool before that. Like, and I was trying to like get him to come to Maryland. I, was, I wasn't really pressuring him. I was just like, then again, like how me and my sister was. I was just joking with him, telling him to come to Maryland. And yeah, he just I asked him. He told me the day before he was gonna go. I was like, I was I was pretty excited because I like I like playing with him. I used to play with him in middle school, mm-hmm. but yeah, I just like him. I like his game. I like how he plays. That's smooth. And he was on a couple of weeks ago, and he talked about, obviously, that the guard position, he's got some guys working on. He said, obviously, you're working on another big man. Who are some of the guys you're trying to add on now to your class at the big man or any position? Probably Efton or uh, Frank. Those are the only two people I know that, like, really need to recruit my man. Those are the only two people I've seen play. What's kind of your recruiting tactics? I don't really – like, I'm not really a recruiter type person, but – I'm cool with a lot of people that play basketball, I'm people that get recruited by Maryland. So I don't think I'm really, I'm really a good recruiter because mm-hmm. I don't know. I just say, "Come on, let's go." Like I just, I just tell them how it could be. Let's see what they want. And you guys currently are at the number 18 ranked recruiting spot. Do you kind of expect to possibly land at least one more guy to add in this class? Mm, I think we could get one more. I don't think. I don't think it will be a guard, though. I probably will be a bit. Okay. For sure. And in terms of 2020 guys, there's a couple other guys, like Quan Smart, Marcus as well. Do you ever have a relationship with any of those guys? Um, I know 2020, I just know Marcus. Mm-hmm. Really, that's the one. I, I'm playing the game on him. I, just, I know I'm, I'm pretty good friends with him. Absolutely. And talk about Coach Turgeon. Obviously, that's a big part of your recruitment and commitment as well. What do you like about Coach? Like coach is pretty a pretty laid back guy. He's just like he's just a guy that's just chill. He's a really chill coach. Like he's not really an uptight coach. And he like he calls me almost every day, just checking in with me. I like that about him. Like, like just talking about stuff like other than basketball. Like he's just somebody you can talk to. Really. And you will be a part of the Big Ten now. Obviously, one of the best, not the best conference in America. How excited to be able to be a part of that? I like that. I like that. I like to play against them type like players, cause that would be a good like. I would be good playing against them. That would make me a better player. Really. That would just make me push harder. Like I would, I'd rather play them than like than playing a lower conference where I'm playing against not bum, but like playing at a low level. Really, I'd rather play in the high higher level so I can get better. So, like people that can push me. Through. And I feel like. I feel like until you like really kill them, like kill in a higher level, higher level, then that's when you're like a really good player. Like when you can kill at a high level. Couldn't agree more. And you have you were able to take a couple of visits too as well. You had one when your sister obviously went out there. You went to a couple of games as well. How much how were those visits? How'd you kinda of like those games and the visit you took out there to Maryland? Like I love their I love their fam, like their family type atmosphere. Like their fans are just so welcoming. Every time I come like they they, they really know me because I've been there so much. Like, my fans really are good. Welcome. Like, they're, really, they're really friendly. Like, I sometimes play with them on the game and all that. And you also, as I said, you commit pretty early. And I think some people were expecting guys maybe to wait till after the season to go on some visits. Why did you decide and what was it like going through this hectic recruiting process where you couldn't take more visits, you couldn't play AU? Um, I felt like it was the right time because – like, it was just, like, it just felt right because, like, I just knew, like, over the quarantine, they just showed me why they just, like, they were a good school for me or a right school. I, and I felt like there's no more, no reason for putting it aside. I just felt like I belonged there, Maryland. If there was an AU season, do you think you might have waited a little bit longer to commit? Um, probably. I don't, I'm not sure. No, 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 no. I don't think so. Because... It was over quarantine. If there was no quarantine problem or if they didn't show as much love as they did, then I think I would have waited. I wasn't really new. Gotcha. And we talked about this about your sister, but there's also another person in your family that was a big time basketball player, and that's your mom, Hall of Fame player at UMBC. What was it like just growing up with her and having her kind of be someone you could look to in terms of the game of basketball? Yeah, people, I never really seen her play, but. Mm-hmm. People told me how good she used to be, but I'm 
not sure. Like, I, I never really see her play, but she, she sometimes she be helping us. Like, she's a good, like, she's a good basketball mom. Like, one time, she, she went from Will Williams to come down to DC to watch me play in the same day. So she watched me and watched me play. Like, she's just a good supporter. Like, she takes us to a lot of stuff. Like, she's really active in our, in our basketball life. That's awesome. What would you say is the first memory you think of when you think of your mom? Uh, um, it's a lot of memories. Um, probably when he was um younger and she was playing basketball. And like, like she, like this is when she was just playing with like her friends and like right. Mm-hmm. Like this is like not even really playing. It was when she, like she at first like I was little. She first lit me up to dump the ball, and I was like the first time I was just the rim. That was just I just I just remember that. That was a good moment. That's awesome. Has she ever joined any game with you and Angel? Um, sometimes she does when she sees it. Like she just shoots the ball. Like, mm-hmm. like she's that old jump shot. <laughs> <laughs> like that, like that weird jump shot. She just shoots that, and like she just she don't really play very hard. I never see her play hard in time. And so let's talk about your high school career. I mean, you started off at Newtown. You also head out to St. Francis now, where you won a state championship last year. Let's just talk about your high school career. What kind of led you now heading over to St. Francis? Um, like I said before, like St. Francis has like better competition. Like we're on a national schedule. Mm-hmm. And Newtown is just like in the county. Like they have, they play pretty good teams. Like like Delaney, Ryan, another school with and um Wives. I forgot the guy's name. Wives. Yeah, we play pretty good teams on there. But I feel like every game, like. Every other town game with St. Francis is, is going to be a good game. Like, it's not going to be a good loss. loss. And you go out there, and you guys go 38-4. and four. You win the championship. You average almost a double-double. Take us through last year. What was it like? Last year, I like I like last year. I felt like I could have did more, but I didn't really need to because all our seniors, our seniors are pretty good, like Ace and uh, Jamal West, Jordan Tool. Jamal Banks, like those guys, when you had it from me, I didn't really have to do a lot, but I feel like next year I'm going to have to like really step up, you know, like play that senior role, like that leader role. I, I was really like the little brother to them, really. I've always been like that with them because I, I grew up playing basketball with them. But now i got to like grow up and be that leader role. And that is what you're going to be next year, the face of the team, the best player. You're obviously already committed. What's your goals? What's your expectations for yourself for next season? My goal for next season is to be Gatorade Player of the Year. That's like my biggest goal right now. That's what I'm trying to achieve right now. And I want to, I, I still haven't hit a thousand points. I'm trying to hit a thousand points, for like a thousand rebounds. Would you say that's the average you kind of expect to have? Like, what do you think you're capable of averaging next season? Probably seven, like definitely a double double, but 17 and 10 or 11. Mm-hmm. No doubt. And, you also, I know you have a pretty good relationship with Rudy Gay. You guys have worked out a couple of times together. What's it been like being able to work out with him, and what kind of impact has he had in your life? Rudy's right. Like, you're pretty cool, chill, down to earth guy. Like he's not really like most some NBA guys I heard, but like like really Hollywood, really like really don't want to talk to little like younger kids. But Rudy really, really, he has his own like he's he has his own gym. Like he's really always there talking to the kids, communicating with everybody, helping them out. He's just like a really down to earth player in person. And there are a couple other guys from the DMV area that obviously are in the NBA, but now we see this younger guys, you alongside guy like Ike. We see a lot of just big time guys that around that area that are big time DMV players. What's it like seeing the rise of you guys and how much talent there is out there now? I feel like the DMV has the best players in the country. That's like that's really my opinion. But like I, I like how we're getting the like recognition recognition we finally deserve, and I feel like. Basketball is just going to keep going up from now because we're getting this recognition. No doubt, man. Also for AAU, it obviously wasn't the year you probably wanted to have, but you already can take over. What was it like? Why did you choose them? And how excited are you to go out there and start playing whenever you can? Well, I was – I probably was going to play with uh, – I was ready to play with Durant. But, like, I didn't like the position they had me in. So I, I wanted to play UIBL because the first year I played Adidas, second, my second year I played under um, – so last year I had to play UIBL with really. So I want. I was ready to play with Durant, but I didn't like the position they were putting me in. Like they were, had a lot of talent on that team. I really wanted to play against them, really. so I, I just chose Tigo because they want. They were recruiting me. I just felt like 
that would be the best fit. And so what are you hearing? Do you think you're going to get some AU games in this year, or what's it all looking like for you? Um, I don't know. I, don't, I might not return. I don't know. I, I'm thinking about returning. I don't know if I'm returning to this angle. I don't think it's worth it. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to wait my heart. It depends on how I hate the field. But we had, our team has games, though. has, like, tournaments lined up. Gotcha, for sure, man. And a couple more things before I let you go. One is talking about your legacy. That's something I was, like, wrapping up with. And by the time you're done playing basketball, what do you want your legacy to be for what you achieve both on the court as well as off of it? I want to have a, a, a more of a, a, a impact on off the game and on the court. Like, as much as, like, like the greatest player and the greatest impact on the court. Like, some of the guys, like LeBron, Jordan, Kobe, they have a like good like LeBron's a more of an impact off the court than them guys. I want to be like like LeBron, like, like put money in the communities, in the poverty, poor people. Like I I like to impact the game and like off the court. Really. Like that's my main focus. Really. I really like to impact off the court. Yeah, one of the great. That's big time, man. Is there like one specific dream? Like I know some guys like building a, a kind of a basketball courts, building a center. Building a score is that maybe like one big dream specific that you have? I wish I would try to like provide healthcare to uh, people who like, mm-hmm. don't really have a lot of money for it because that's really important. Society that's really expensive. I like to, and I like to put like kids in schools, set up recreation centers, like especially in Baltimore because there's a lot of gang activity and killings around here. And I like to do that. And how did you kind of adjust to growing up in that environment? Well, I didn't really – I grew up in the county, but mm-hmm. I played basketball in the inner city. So, like, like riding in practice, hearing gunshots, practicing, hearing gunshots, I just – at first I was really scared because I'm, like, a county kid, really. But then I just adjusted to it, and I just cope with it. Like, I just cope with it. Like, a lot of people that I know – a couple people that I know, like, really died because of that. And I – like, it just it's affected me kind of. But I just – like, now it's, it's just running around. We just got to deal with it. Right. Gotcha. And my final thing before I let you go is give me your three biggest goals you have for yourself for your Maryland career. Um, national championship. Um, average triple-double for my whole Maryland career. No, not triple-double. Double-double for my whole Maryland career. And I like to I like to interact with the fans a little bit more than them. Previous players were like, just off the court. So, like, yeah, just off the court. So. Like, when we, like, when I go to Maryland, I'm probably going to, like, this is going to be the year 2021. That's going to be a college players get big. Mm-hmm. I'm probably going to try to come out of there with like six figures. That's, that's a good, that's a great one. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking time to come on again, my guy, and look forward to seeing what God's got next for you, bro. Okay, thank you. Of course, appreciate man. Y'all welcome on, man. God bless. God bless you too, bro.